when Stefano Mariottini found two ancient artifacts while diving he couldn't believe his luck little did he know just how significant his chance discoveries would prove to be it's a beautiful sunny day in the small town of Monterasse in the Calabrian coast of Italy the date is August 16 1972 and holiday maker Stefano Mariottini is enjoying the final hours of his vacation snorkeling in the clear blue waters of the Ionian Sea just south of the town he spots something on the ocean floor that will write his name in the history books Italy is a country with a rich and colorful history having once ruled much of the Western world its culture and artistic legacy is immeasurable and let's not forget the nation's archaeological treasures from the melancholy perfection of Pompeii and Herculaneum to the grandeur of Rome's Colosseum it's fair to say that Italy's buried past has provided a rich and enduring window into life into the ancient world in a land packed with ancient wonders Calabria on the southern tip of Italy is somewhat even more full often described as the country's open-air museum it seems as though antiquities can be found at every turn anything and everything you can think of in relation to ancient civilizations has been found there thanks to its location the Romans weren't the only ancient civilization to leave an archaeological and cultural footprint indeed in ancient times Calabria was once something of a hot spot for migrating Greeks beginning in the 8th century BC Hellenic adventurers began to populate this and other parts of southern Italy so many in fact that the Romans later referred to Italy's southern coastal areas as Magna Graecia literally greater Greece of course when the Roman Empire arrived in southern Italy this other great civilizing force also influenced not only its politics and commerce but its art as well nonetheless much of what we consider great Roman art and sculpture also owes an enormous debt to classical Greek forms and techniques the town of Monasterase on Calabria's east coast is a perfect example of how entrenched Greek culture was in the region the place itself was founded by Greek migrants and the ruins of their settlement Colonia can still be seen today the myriad ancient artifacts found there prove that eventually the older Hellenic way of life merged almost seamlessly with that of the Romans now let's go back to that beautiful summer's day in Monastrasse Stefano Mariottini a chemist and part-time archaeologist is snorkeling a little over 200 yards out from the Rias Marina peering into the Ionian Sea's crystal clear waters the diver notices something incredible I'm looking from the surface when I saw a human arm in that first moment I thought it was a corpse Mariottini told the BBC in 2005 thankfully the diver hadn't found a dead body instead he'd found what had been labeled one of Italy's most important archaeological finds of the last 100 years indeed what Mariottini had discovered wasn't a human body but a bronze one and an incredibly old one at that realizing what he'd uncovered the amateur archaeologist dug away at the surrounding sand after a couple of hours excavation the diver had revealed the visage of an ancient Greek warrior I was astonished he recalled to the BBC the face was wonderful the divers good luck didn't end there however not content with just the one amazing statue Mariottini went on to find a second yes a second warrior at this point and perhaps rather sensibly the chemist reported his findings to the authorities just over a week later both the statues left their watery home for the first time in centuries after the statues retrieval the work of restoring them could begin once the general muck had been removed it became clear that these statues were something very special indeed not that a pair of bronze sculptures turning up at the same time wasn't an occasion in itself but these warriors were different it's incredibly rare to find full-size bronzes from this period intact but these figures also confirmed something amazing they proved Greek traditions had been alive and well in Calabria when they were made named the Rias bronzes the bearded naked warriors were almost in mint condition their size style and appearance matched that of the Greeks preferred method of sculpture however the date they were made around 450 BC with their creation squarely inside the Roman era not only that but the statues boasted silver teeth copper nipples and lips and ivory eyes these touches certainly showed just how intricate the decoration of this kind of sculpture could be and not even millennia at the foot of the ocean could dull the incredible details carved into the warriors faces 
Although no one is sure who created the bronzes, one thing is certain – people love them. When the warriors were first put on show in 1981, more than a million art lovers went to see them. Since then, around 130,000 people a year make the trip to the Archaeological Museum in Reggio Calabria to view the ancient sculptures for themselves. As for how they ended up at the bottom of the ocean, again, no one's quite sure. Some believe that they were lost when the vessel they were loaded onto wrecked nearby. No evidence of a shipwreck has been found in the area, however. Others think that they were most likely thrown into the ocean on purpose. And while that seems bizarre, offloading cargo is one sure way to stop pirates getting their hands on it. It's unlikely that the truth about the warrior's original journey will ever be known. And while their origin remains a mystery, believe it or not, there's an even bigger enigma surrounding their discovery. It seems that around that August day in 1972, something criminal might have even been afoot in Monasterase. In 2008, one Giuseppe Brago, a Calabrian art detective, made a controversial claim. According to Brago, Mariettini didn't find the two statues that day. He found three. And at some point between the diver notifying the authorities to their existence and the recovery of the bronzes, one of the trio was taken. Yes, despite the fact that each statue weighed more than 800 pounds when raised from the seabed, apparently persons unknown were able to remove one without any witnesses whatsoever. To back up these claims, Brago purports to have photographed a series of documents that indicate an alarming scenario. At least, that's what he told Italy Magazine in 2008. And what exactly is this alarming scenario? It's Brago's claim that John Paul Getty Museum of Los Angeles was linked to this alleged theft of antiquities. The museum, of course, strenuously denies any involvement. In fact, in a statement, it said, this information is wrong and must be corrected. So a leisurely day at the coast turned into a red-letter day for Italian and, indeed, global archaeology. And while Brago's conspiracy might throw a little shade the warrior's way, it can never diminish the importance of the sheer beauty of the bronzes from the bottom of the sea.